I'd heard the entire town of Fernie once lived under a curse. When you're a kid and you grow up in Fernie, that's all you ever heard. There would be strife, there would be fire, there would be flood, and they had all those things. Known as the Ghost Rider Curse, it dates back to the late 1800s. I went to the Fernie Museum to find out its origins. Can you tell us the story of the Ghost Rider as you know it? I think the most kind of common thread is that William Fernie was out here prospecting, thought out the Kanaha, asking for where the coal deposits were. William Fernie made an agreement with the chief for showing him where the coal was, would marry his daughter. Once he knows where all this deposits were, William Fernie decided, I'm not gonna follow through with this, and rode away. And it was at that moment that the chief placed a curse on the valley. And just so Ferniites didn't forget, shadows on a cliff would remind them. We can't right, see it right now. We can't now. see it right on the mountain right now, but it's just basically on the side of Mount Hosmer over there. Uh-huh, and you can see it when there's no snow. When there's no snow and it's a really bright day. This is supposed to be William Fernie. Okay. That's supposed to be the chief. And that's supposed to be his daughter. This is very ingrained into who we are as a, as a community. It's certainly a dramatic story, but one that paints the Tanaha Nation as a bunch of villains. So I went to their government building to hear their version. What is the story of the, the curse? We don't really have a story on the Ghost Rider curse. The basis of the story about, you know, being wrong, being cheated out of land, that's kind of true. Yeah. We were kind of cheated out of the land, however you look at it. Yeah. We don't do curses, and uh, I was telling somebody, I said, well, even if we did do a curse, we wouldn't take it back. <laughs> <laughs> so our stories for, for Fernie are, are a lot different. We call that area, that uh, the Elk Valley, Kukanamakis, uh, and that's Raven's Land. Many years ago, a boastful squirrel considered himself to be strong and powerful as Grizzly, who is the greatest of all animals. To prove himself, Squirrel set out to close the Elk Valley, while his wife washed the eastern entrance between Crow's Nest Mountain. They were hoarding, I guess. They, you know, they wanted everything for themselves. When Nakikam needed some flint for making tools, he needed to go into the valley, and so he's the one who ended up killing those characters and open up the valley for people to use. So we talk about that story, we talk about sharing, and it's not good to be greedy and uh, such. But that story didn't get told by the people of Fernie, and the belief in the Ghost Rider curse proliferated. So anything bad happened to anybody in this town, or well, just because of the curse. And bad stuff happened. 1902, 130 miners killed. 1904, town burns down. 1908, the fireproof brick town they built burns down. 1911, the big strike. They blamed everything on the curse. Anything that happens. Anything that happens curse. curse. Yeah. Curse. Curse. I don't care. Hey, my tooth hurts. It's a curse. Curse. I think what's wrong with the story is blaming misfortune on the First Nations as opposed to taking ownership of that and saying, well, these lands were built here and we don't even recognize the Tanaka Nation. You drive through here, you don't even know that there's a history longer than Canadian Confederacy. In 1958, the big mine that employed a lot of the town closed down. The curse was blamed. Enough was enough. The town approached the Tanaha Nation to lift the curse that they never actually set. So Mayor White, who was the mayor at the time, had gotten together with the Tanaha and on August 15, 1964, had this one-day ceremony. I think it was more of a goodwill ambassador thing from both sides, you know. The curse-raising ceremony that I wouldn't say was a ceremony that we believe in. It was more of a acquiescing to the requests of, of the community. The mayor came and he smoked the peace pipe. The Naha chief had said that the curse would be lifted and that new prosperity would come to Fernie. And it actually did. <laughs> That's the funny thing. Self-fulfilling curse gone and things got better? Weird. But it feels off that the Tanaha had to pretend the curse was a real thing. Do you think that was important to do that, though? You know, does that perpetuate the stereotype? When our kids are growing up and looking for their identity, it's hard for us to teach them about our language and the importance of our culture when they don't know our story. You know, that story about Takat and Kukan is one of many stories, and all those stories together teach us who we are. We're not this romanticized, objectified people, but we're real. <laughs>